This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm beginning a build of a Boron 2.4 R2. I'm really excited for this. It's been a while. Saved and saved and finally had enough to be able to purchase a printer kit. So today I'm going to get started with just going over what the build entails and then an initial unboxing. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for people that follow my channel, one of the things I like to do is I, I try to research the heck out of things before I begin. So on my new website, I've put all the links of at least the initial build references that I think I would need. The kit I purchased was a FormBot Boron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus kit. I went ahead and got all the printed parts and I went with the 350 by 350 build. And the reason why I went with the printed parts is I don't have an enclosure, and this printer is actually going to be my first printer that has an enclosure, and therefore in the future I'll be able to print my own ABS parts. Going through the printer, we'll just take a look at what comes with it. So let me scroll down and we'll look through. Here we go. Again, we have all the, we have the tap sensor, and I actually have a Big Tree tap, tap sensor I may use instead, filament runout detector, air filters, breakout boards, EBB 2209 can, which I've had trouble with in the past, although I'm excited on this one. I actually found a website that I'll go over, and I may actually do a separate video on setting up these can boards, because that is uh, really difficult in my opinion. HDMI 5 inch screen, Stealth Burner Clockwork Mod 2. It's using a MANA M8P and a CB1, which I really like. Moon's Motors, heating pad, double sided PEI sheet. We have gates for the build. We have the linear rails, aluminum plate, the materials for the decking. It's using a B6 hot end. I'll probably change that out. And again, somewhere here, there's the covers for this, so it's enclosed. So like I said, I'm pretty excited. Now at $1,019, which is what I spent, it's fairly expensive. Although what I did like in the case of this printer, and I got it from AliExpress, was it was shipping from the U.S. And so it was actually slightly cheaper, all things considered. And I got it from the U.S., so I actually got it within, I think, four days. Now, some of the other references I have, I have the FormBots website. I'm looking at this, and they actually don't have printer with the printed parts. You have to buy those separately, although it looks like they have some deals here now. One of the things I noticed on their website is they have some additional references. And so I've pulled those up and those include wiring diagrams, which will be helpful as I'm doing the build, different wiring diagram, and a little bit of a guide here. And again, this is from FormBot's website. They have some other information on how to install certain things and updates. And then again, more wiring instructions. So they actually have a fair number of references looking like in some of their documents, they have additional references. So as I'm doing the build, I'm going to link more and more to my website. Hopefully you'll find that as a helpful resource. So with that being said, let me switch over. I'm going to go to a mobile mic so my sound might change a little bit. And let's go ahead and do an unboxing. So give me a second. Let me get things set up. I'm going to start off by pointing out this actually came in two separate packages. I'm going to open up. A smaller package first. I'm believing this really light. I'm thinking this is the printed parts. At least that's what I'm hoping it is. Real carefully open this up. See if I can do it without damaging the contents. As you can see, I haven't even bothered opening these since I got them. I've been trying to finish some other projects. So that way I could do this. And like I said, I've been really looking forward to putting this together. So let's see what we got. It's packed very well. And the and yeah, it's all the printed parts. And black and red, so that looks good. Lots and lots and lots of printed parts. Um piece of sandpaper is with it, and I'm sure that's to and sand some of these down if they need it. Again, these are all 3D print parts. I spent money on them, which I'm a little ashamed of since I have 3D printers, but without a, a enclosure, 
I just really didn't want to mess with ABS and then a possible outgassing and all that junk. What I'm going to do is, unbeknownst to my wife, I'm actually taking over the hallway outside my office now. So I'm going to move the printed parts out into the hallway so they're out of the way. And let me set them somewhere where dogs can't get to them. And then here's the main package that I believe contains all the printer and the printed parts. This is extremely heavy. Um, so let's start taking this apart and open this up and just see what we have. I'm just really interested in how they pack this and what all is included. I'm interested to see if they actually include a manual or why I just wind up using all my links that I've already put, put aside. So let me pause for a second and just move this box around so you can see a little bit better. Just move the lids a little bit so you can see. So it's packed really well. Again, we have another piece of sandpaper. And really fine grain carbide. Yeah. Really fine grain. Right here on top. Yeah, this is the enclosure. It's here on top. So I have all the enclosure panels. And let's again put those in the hallway. So we continue going through here and see what all we have. I'm just going to have to remember that I'm stacking everything out in the hall so I can find it again. That's always one of my problems is I'll put pieces of stuff down and won't be able to find it. This is all really packed well. I'm pleased with that. Piles of things out in the hall. And again, luckily my wife does not come upstairs, so she won't see any of this. This appears to be really well packed. My dogs are already exploring the parts in the hallway. Now, as you can see, we have lots and lots and lots of parts. Let's just take a quick look through here, see what we have. I just want to see how this stuff is labeled. And then what I'll do is I'll probably I'll quit for the day because I just want to keep these as short videos and then actually start the assembly process. Let's let's just look through what we have. See filters, belts, and I have extra belts here somewhere. Oh, there's even an SD card. Didn't notice that. I'm seeing the Big Tree Tech bits. And one of the things I saw in the description is steel wire. I'm not sure what that goes to. The big thing I'm seeing is all the various screws appear to be labeled each bag, so that's excellent. I'm noticing all the AC parts here to have labels on them if you look carefully. I mean, that's great too. Here's the Big Tree Tech board. And one thing I don't like is this isn't in the box, but okay, live with that. Power supply, cords, Everything appears to be here, and if I'm being honest, everything appears to be really well labeled. ETFE tubing. Again, everything's labeled well that I can see. Uh, motion system, and again, you can see all the labels are here. I can see the parts for the tap, although I actually have a big tree tech, a chaos lab tap that I'm going to install for this. I want to use that that big tree set tech sent me. This is all really looking good. Um, I can see just all the various parts. Everything I think I'm going to need is here. Looking underneath, you can see the heated bed. And then next down is the motors. Each of these is packed 
one individual level. So they're basically everything sandwiched in here. So this is packed extremely well. So far, I'm really pleased with this kit. So right now, this is my unboxing. I don't want to pull everything out of the box simply because I actually have too much parts now. And if I start spreading too far into the hallway, uh, my children will tell my wife that I've spread out of my office again. And there will be repercussions. So what I'm going to do is just keep everything in the box for right now. And then in my next video, I'm going to start building the frame. And well, actually, I'll follow along with the directions. I'll do whatever the directions tell me. And I'll record all that. I'm going to go in slow and boring detail. So I'll apologize that for that for anybody that doesn't enjoy that. But I find that doing it slow and steady and trying to document all my steps will be helpful. Right now, if you want to follow along with the project in reading form, text, you can go to my website and at least I have all the references. I may actually start taking pictures of individual parts as I'm putting it together and include that as sort of a journal on my website as well. So that way, people that don't want to watch the video can also look at the website. Lastly, if you're interested, I still have my Clipper Calibration website and spreadsheet, and you're more than welcome to use that. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.